How's it going? So today I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough on my to-do a setup, which I think is pretty good. Um, I don't know. You guys tell me. I hope it's of value one way or another. So let's start with capture. Um, there's really three areas that new tasks come to me. Um, so it's really, I guess for me, it's nice and simple. One is from the missus, and she can task those in her Todoist, which has all in all been really good for our relationship. Uh, I, I'd recommend it. And uh, so past that point, there are emails rather than letting them sit in my inbox until I feel like getting to them. Uh, at least once a week, I can get to inbox zero by forwarding them to Todoist. Todoist lets you set up an email address to do that, which is relatively straightforward. Other than that, I have uh, Google Assistant automation, which I've set up. And uh, if I'm being honest, I'm a little bit spoiled. So it's the only way I'm really willing to put tasks through. Uh, I guess if Todoist is already open, sometimes I'll type them. But I strongly recommend setting something like this up. It really dramatically reduces the resistance to capturing tasks. And that's really one of the, the huge breaking points in my experience. So once things arrive in my Todoist inbox, at least once a week, but ideally more, I'm going to go through and start processing them. And so what processing looks like is first I'll go and add a project or area to that task. Rather, I'll add the task to a project or area. Then I will set a priority for it. And then I'll add tags as relevant. Uh, one tag could be things to watch. Another is Amazon, because if I'm speaking to customer service, I just want to remember all the things really easily that I have to talk to them about. So tags can be useful in that way. And I'll show you other ways that I'm using them as well. Although I think I'm still pretty minimalist as far as tags go. So if this is something that I just want to shelf and you know give a sense of priority to and then throw it in a project, it'll go normally into an area. Um, or maybe if it's part of a project that I'm just not ready to action yet, it'll go into that project. But uh, it'll pretty much still be sitting on the shelf. Now, when the time comes to activate that task or if it turns out right out of the gate that that was something important I want to do, the question is, is it time sensitive? If it is time sensitive, then I'll give it a due date. There's no question. and It'll surface on the right day. And that's beautiful. But I also am really hesitant to give due dates where they are not needed or even when they're not strictly necessary. And the reason is, in my experience anyways, I just end up kicking a list of 10 tasks day to day to day because I decided I kind of wanted to force myself to do it on Thursday, and now it's Sunday. The week took a different turn. I didn't want to maybe admit that uh, I wasn't going to do those tasks. They still seem like a good idea, but I kind of end up running on you know last week's intent when the situation has changed. So in that case, what I have figured out is I use the up next tag. And what that does is it allows me to just create a queue of tasks that I'd like to work on, but I'm not necessarily in a rush. So I'll work on them in order of importance and um, not worry too, too much about when they're due. Whichever method I use to queue up the tasks, they will show up at the right time because I have this pretty nifty query set up. And finally, I have an Android widget. And I'm pretty sure for iOS, you have that widget page that you can use. And I'm sure that must work as well. So it's really nice to keep those on your phone, always very visible and always very accessible. So now that we've taken a look at the high level, let's dive into Todoist actually. So if you take a look at the inbox, then you'll see, you know, this is where things land. So here, record my Todoist setup. Perfect. Okay. So here, that is for uh, building a second brain. All right. Are we typing here? Yes. Slight delay. That is for building a second brain. And then it's crazy important. So I'm going to give it a P1. And um, let's say I want to do that to well, I'm doing that today, aren't I? So we'll call that today, hit enter, and it's gone. So um, what's really beautiful is that processing in Todoist is fast because you can just type everything in line with a couple of shortcuts. And uh, I, I really find that light flowy feeling is important for making for making a system that we don't break as often as systems that feel heavy, I suppose. Uh, UX is key even when dealing with ourselves. So past that point, we have projects. Now we know how we're supposed to frame our projects. We have X item by Y date equals Z outcome. Now just for visual, I stated them in a different order. And because Todoist doesn't have custom fields or really too many views for the project, what I ended up doing is using vertical bars to separate things. Now you'll notice emojis throughout. I think Tiago was the one who suggested this. And I have to say it's night and day. Again, a UX feature, it feels so mundane, but it 
really spruces up the place. It really makes me want to come back into Todoist. Uh, so it's funny, but it works. Don't underestimate it. So these are projects. Projects are, um, you know, basically the most actionable items. And each week we might find that despite the due dates, we want to ascribe a different priority to our projects. What I really like about Todoist is the way that we can just kind of click and drag. So again, nice, light and flowy. Um, I'm not a big fan of doing this in a table in Evernote because uh, I just find it a little bit too clunky, but you know, I can see the value. So I'm not hating on that method. Um, if you scroll down, we have areas. What I will probably do at some point is a video on how I got to my areas that are grouped under three kind of higher level focus is which are what I decided is basically driving my annual goals. So uh, again, in here, if we take a look at uh, here, the flow, so that's for my email newsletter, um, you can see at the top, this is actually a ton of unprocessed stuff that I've thrown in here, but I haven't actually processed through, let, let's say within my actual, the flow backlog. I tend to do a few each week, um, but otherwise I just glance through them and make sure that there's nothing critical that's getting lost in there. And especially because of priorities and, oh yeah, this is good. Here, sort by priority, that, that one's really nice. So you can always just, again, take things from the top of the pile. Um, but for the most part, I do use um, add section over here. Uh, so you see website, email list, Twitter, social, so on. So there's a nice way to split things up. And each one of these is kind of a backlog. Some of these are definitely projects, not just tax, tasks. But when I take them off the shelf, I'll turn them into proper projects. For now, this is kind of nice, light, nice, light, easy storage. All right, what's next? If we take a look at uh, the query that I promised you, this is how everything surfaces. This is where the real magic is happening. So you'll see the first section is today. The actual first section is overdue, but nothing is overdue, so it disappears. So we have today, then we have in progress. The reason I like to use in progress and just put it right at the top here is I really want to limit the number of things that are in progress. Life gets pretty crazy as it is. And if you're anything like me, um, well, I have a tendency to pull a lot of tasks in, open them and not always close them out. To avoid that, I make sure that what I'm working on has really high visibility. The only thing that has higher visibility are things that are really uh, what I'm going to call urgent because they're overdue or they're due today. Uh, so I really need to see that. Afterwards, my third section is up next. So things that aren't today and they aren't in progress, but they are um, the things that I tagged up next that I want to do. And this is all um, go through and edit this each week uh, and just adjust, make sure that these tasks still make sense or still align. The priorities are right, all of that stuff and uh, that I still care about doing them, that I haven't put in too many things. And at the same time, I'll go through my backlogs and load things in to this list. And of course it's in priority order. So the query that we're using is, uh, and you know, I'll, I'll make sure this is posted along with it, is overdue, comma is what creates a new section in here. Um, so we have overdue, comma, today, then a comma, you know, next list. We have in progress and not today. And the reason I do not today is because I was getting duplicates. So I had to tidy that up. And then finally up next, but also not today, not in progress tidies things up. If you start to just write a blank query, you'll get this drop down menu and you have discover more queries. So that leads you straight to to do a documentation, which is generally pretty good. There were maybe one or two things I still had to figure out, but uh, all in all it does a great job. So that is the to doist setup. And just to bring it full circle and sandwich this uh, demonstration with the flow chart and overview is things get captured, right? They go straight into my Todoist inbox. From there, I add the project or area, I add the priority and I add the tags. I decide if I'm gonna action it immediately and put it into my up next or assign a due date, or if I'm gonna backlog it. And either way, each week I'm reviewing all of this and pulling things out of the backlog, sometimes putting them back in. And so based on time sensitivity, it will either get a due date or it'll just be thrown into my up next queue. Either way, my task query is going to surface it. And then finally, not only will it show up in Todoist uh, on every platform, but it will also pop up in my Android widget. 
I can make maybe another video because I'm also using a basic calendar sync, which is available in Todoist. I think it's Todoist slash integrations, but you can get it from uh, the web version of Todoist in their menu under your profile photo, and you can create a quick sync. Now, maybe use a test calendar, use a new calendar, because that has caused a bit of trouble while I was still ironing it out. Um, and I would be really careful with deleting tasks when you delete calendar events. Uh, again, maybe we'll just do another video about that. But this is the process. So if you have comments, if you have questions, uh, reach out. I'm intending to post this on mitchschwartz.co. Maybe you're watching it there right now. Uh, but for other videos, you can check over there. Uh, thanks a lot for watching.